Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. If this is your first time, let me give you a quick rundown on what we're all about. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we build fun and inexpensive focused Commander decks. A focused Commander deck is more attuned than a casual deck, but not quite to the level of a competitive or optimized deck. Today's episode is going to be a special one, though, where we exclude the cost of the Commander. With just a $25 budget, it's pretty much impossible to build around some Commanders unless we do so. Sometimes you get lucky and open up a Commander in a pack, or you could just trade for them if you really want to build around them. So our budget is still going to be $25, but again, that's $25 for just 99 cards because we're excluding the cost of that Commander. And prices on this show are powered by our sponsor, TCG Player. Before we get started today, though, make sure you go check out our new classic pink playmat and Commander's Quarters t-shirts on thecommandersquarters.com. And thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise. It really does help support the channel. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell notification icon so that you can stay up to date on the latest Commander's Quarters episodes. Today's episode is a patron-selected deck tech. Once a month, patrons of this show vote on what commander they'd like to see on an upcoming episode. Today's commander is God Eternal Oketra. She's a 3-6 zombie god with double strike that costs 3 white white. She has, whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. And when she dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library third from the top. 5 mana for a 3-6 with double strike isn't too bad, but the ability to create 4-4s with vigilance seems pretty powerful. Now this only happens when we cast creatures, but since we're in white, we've got some ways to abuse this. So what's our strategy with this deck? Well, we're going to cast creatures that bounce to create a ton of tokens. There are creatures in white that can either bounce themselves or others back to our hand so we can continuously cast creatures to create more and more tokens and then how do we win with this deck we're going to overwhelm our opponents with our huge army once we're set up it won't take us very long to create a giant army of zombie warriors and since they have vigilance we can be really aggressive and swing out constantly as with all commander's quarters decks i'm going to break this deck down into 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how you're going to win with it so let's start off with our first tactic tactic number one geek rock we're going to be running some mana dorks in this deck, including Hedron Crawler, Mannequin, and Milliken, each of which tap for a colorless. These cards can not only help us out early, but they can also help us out later in the game when our commander's in play too. Getting that zombie warrior token for just 2 mana is a pretty good deal. So we're also going to be running Goldmere, which is pretty much the same, but it taps for a white. Since we're in a monocolor deck though, we really don't have to worry about fixing. So we're also going to be running Palladium Mirror, which taps for 2 colorless. The quicker that we can ramp to get our commander out, the faster that we can get things going. There aren't too many mana dorks in mono white though, so we're also going to be running some efficiently costed mana rocks like Marble Diamond. And then Mindstone and Hedron and archive are also efficiently costed and they can draw some cards. Mono White really does struggle with drawing cards so these cards can come in huge at providing us some additional value later in the game. Now all of these sources of ramp are very efficiently costed but they're not quite as good as the Golden Pig of this deck. The Golden Pig is going to be the number one card out of our 99 and the Golden Pig for this deck is Oketra's Monument. It's a legendary artifact that costs three and it says white creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever you cast a creature spell create a 1-1 white warrior creature token with vigilance. This card is an absolute bomb in this deck and it fits in perfectly with our game plan. With this deck we want to cast creature spells over and over again. So ramping is good, but reducing the cost of those spells is even better. This can even reduce the cost of some of our best creatures in half. That allows us to cast them twice as many times in a single turn. And with this in play, each time that we cast them, we're not only getting a 4-4 with Vigilance, but also a 1-1 with Vigilance too. Now those 1-1s might not be very threatening, but they can be great chump blockers for us. This is a fantastic card in this deck, and it really enables us to take over a game very quickly. But what are some of those creatures that we're going to be casting with Oketra's Monument in play? Let's go through them now in tactic number two, Bounce Back. First up, we've got two of the best with Core Sky Fisher and White Mane Lion. When Core Sky Fisher enters the battlefield, we have to return a permanent back to our hand. And then White Mane Lion makes us return a creature, and it has Flash. In most decks, bouncing something back to our hand wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. But with this deck, we want to cast these creatures over and over again. So we can use their enter the battlefield triggers to force them to return themselves back to our hand. We also have some other creatures that cost a little bit more that do this. Both Emancipation Angel and Stone Cloaker do basically the same thing at 3 mana. On top of that, we can use Stone Cloaker to exile cards from graveyards too. And then at 4 mana, there's Ancestral Statue, which can also bounce itself back to our hand. Now, there are only so many creatures with this type of effect, but there's also some other ones that we can work with too. So let's go through some more in tactic number 3, Away With You. First up, we've got an Aviary Mechanic, which allows us to bounce another permanent that we control. Jeskai Barricade does the same, but for a creature, and it also has Flash. So while they can't bounce themselves, they can bounce other creatures that we control. While this isn't as effective, it's still very effective in this deck. So we're also going to be running Stormfront Riders, which can bounce itself, but it also has to bounce another creature too. And then Dust Elemental does the same, but for three creatures total. We're running plenty of low-cost creatures in this deck that are great targets for these effects. By just returning a few of these creatures back to our hand, we can recast them and get ahead of our opponents very quickly. And finally, there's Scapegoat, which is a fantastic way to return a ton of creatures back to our hand at once. At the price of sacrificing a creature, we can return any number of target creatures we control back to our hand. 
This not only can keep our engine going, but it also can save us from board wipes. But we've still got a couple more tricks up our sleeves and ways to bring our creatures back. So let's go through them now in tactic number four, keep up. First up, there's a Ganjo Freeriders, which says at the beginning of your upkeep, return a white creature you control back to its owner's hand. This is a fantastic way for us to return some creatures back to our hand that can't return themselves. Next up, we've got Blood Clock and Umbilicus, which are a little more durable since they're artifacts. They both are very effective in this deck and do the exact same thing. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player returns a permanent they control back to its owner's hand unless they pay two life. On top of this being a potential downside for our opponents, it's also a huge upside for us. Again, the more creatures that we can return back to our hand, the better. And these especially help with creatures that can't return themselves back to our hand. Like I mentioned before, we've got some creatures that are easy to cast that really take advantage of these effects. So let's go through some of them now in tactic number five, the best things in life. First up, we've got Ornithopter and Phyrexian Walker. Both of these are going to be free for us to cast. With our commander in play, we essentially get to create that token for free. And with ways to bounce these back to our hand, they can be even more effective. Some other creatures that are free for us to cast are Endless One, Shifting Wall, and Ugin's Conjurant. Now we can cast them for zero if we need to, but without an Anthem effect, they're going to die. So most of the time we will cast them for one, but it's nice to have that option. And finally there's Conclave Phalanx, which isn't free, but it does have Convoke. So we can cast it without paying any mana by just tapping five of our creatures. On top of that, when it enters the battlefield, we gain one life for each creature we control. And with this deck, this can be an especially substantial amount of life to gain. Now while free is great, paying one mana for a creature isn't too bad either. So let's go through some useful creatures that only cost one mana in tactic number six, Small But Mighty. First up there's Signal Pest, which has Battle Cry, so when it attacks, each other attacking creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. On top of that, it also can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. This is a very cheap creature for us to cast that also pumps our team when it attacks. With our go wide strategy, this card can be especially effective. And then there's Loyal Sentry, and when it blocks, it destroys that creature and Loyal Sentry. This is a very cheap and effective way of deterring some attacks. Next up, there's Martyred Rosalka, which allows us to pay a white and sacrifice a creature to make target creature not be able to attack this turn. Since we have some expendable creatures, this can come in handy in certain situations. And then we've got some ways to gain life with Soul Warden and Mardu Woe Reaper. Soul Warden gains us one life whenever any creature enters the battlefield. And whenever Woe Reaper or another warrior enters the battlefield under our control, we can exile target creature card from a graveyard and if we do we gain one life. Since the tokens that we create are warriors this really helps us out with some graveyard hate and gaining us some life. Next up is Kami the False Hope which we can sacrifice for a fog effect. And we can use Children of Corlys in a very similar way since we can sacrifice it to gain the life that we lost this turn. And finally we've got some creatures that are very effective at protecting our commander. We can sacrifice Benevolent Bodyguard to give her protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. And then we can sacrifice Dauntless Bodyguard and Resolute Watchdog to give her indestructible. But we've got plenty of other ways to protect our commander and our other creatures as well. Let's go through them now in tactic number 7, Protect and Serve. First up there's Selfless Spirit, which we can sacrifice to give all creatures we control indestructible until end of turn. At just 2 mana, this is a very efficient creature for us to cast and to have on the board. But we also have spells that can give our creatures indestructible as well with Rootborn Defenses, Make a Stand, and Unbreakable Formation. On top of that, Rootborn Defenses also is going to let us populate. Make a Stand is going to give all of our creatures plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. And if we cast Unbreakable Formation during our main phase, we get a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of our creatures and they get Vigilance until end of turn. We're also going to be running some ways to give all of our creatures protection with a Chromus Blessing and Reverent Mantra. On top of that, we can cycle a Chromus Blessing if we need to, and Reverent Mantra can be cast for free if we exile a white card from our hand. Protection can either help us out either defensively or even offensively. Then we have some creatures that can pump our team with Venerated Loxodon and Benelish Marshall. Venerated Loxodon has Convoke, and when it enters the battlefield, we put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that convoked it. And then Benelish Marshall is just a straight up anthem effect. It's going to give other creatures we control plus one plus one. These cards can come in huge at giving us some extra defense as well as offense when we need it. And finally, there's Angelic Chorus, which really helps us bolster our own life total. It says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to its toughness. We're going to have a lot of creatures entering the battlefield under our control, so this can gain us a ton of life. Protecting our things is great, but what about dealing with our opponent? And threats. Let's go through some ways now in tactic number 8, Long Arm of the Law. First up there's Imposing Sovereign, which says creatures your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. This is a very cheap and efficient effect on a body that really slows our opponents down. And then there's War Priest of Thune, which is going to destroy target enchantment when it comes into play. And since we have ways to bounce this creature, we can use it multiple times. The Elden Relic Warder is a great way to temporarily get rid of either an artifact or enchantment when it comes into play. And then there's Oblation, which is a fantastic removal spell. It says the owner of target non-land permanent shuffles it into their library, then draws two cards. This card can really save you in a pinch and is definitely worth giving your opponent two cards. But how do we get to all these cards and keep things going? Let's go through some ways now in tactic number 9, get a clue. First up, we've got a couple of creatures that help us draw some cards. When Thraven Inspector comes into play, it gives us a clue. We do have to pay 2 to sacrifice that clue in order to draw a card. But again, Mono White really struggles with card advantage, so we'll take what we can get. And then Wall of Omens and Sky Scanner both draw us a card when they come into play. These effects are especially great on creatures since we can bounce them back to our hand in a lot of ways. Next up we've got Bygone Bishop and Mentor of the Meek, which really take advantage of us casting cheap creatures. Bygone Bishop has, whenever you cast a creature spell with converted mana cost of 3 or less, investigate. And then Mentor of the Meek says, whenever another creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay 1 if you do draw a card. Both of these can be very effective engines for us once we get set up. Next up there's Alms Collector which has Flash and if an opponent would draw two or more cards instead you and that player each draw a card. 
So this not only hurts opponents, but it also helps us. And finally, there's Infiltration Lens, which says when equipped creature becomes blocked by a creature, you may draw two cards. As I mentioned before, Mono White really struggles, so we'll take what we can get. It isn't optimal, but it can definitely draw some cards throughout the game. We're going to be very aggressive with this deck, so we're going to be attacking a lot. But how do we go about really finishing off our opponents? Let's go through some ways now in our final tactic, tactic number 10, Overwhelming Forces. First up, there's Binding Mummy, which has, whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you may tap target artifact or creature. The tokens that Oketra makes are zombies, so this card comes in huge. It allows us to tap down our opponent's blockers and to swing through. And then there's Subjugator Angel, which can tap down all of our opponent's creatures at once. Next up there's Victory's Herald, which when it attacks, all of our attacking creatures gain flying and lifelink until end of turn. This can give our creatures the evasion that they need and can help us gain a ton of life. And then there's Andric Lunark Marshal, which is a fantastic addition. It says, at the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn if a creature you control has first strike. The same is true for Flying, Death Touch, Double Strike, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Skulk, Trample, and Vigilance. Essentially this gives all of our creatures keywords to each other during combat. So because of Oketra, all of our creatures are going to have Double Strike. And because of our tokens, all of our creatures are going to have Vigilance. On top of that, if we have any Flyers on board, it's going to give all of our creatures Flying too. This is a fantastic way to turn our army into an even bigger threat and to really push things over the top. An even flashier way though might be with Valor and Akros. It says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Since every time we cast a creature we get a token, we're going to have a ton of creatures entering the battlefield each turn. This can really pump up our army and make even our smallest creatures into big threats. Once this deck is set up, it can really get out of control quickly. But now that we've gone through the cards that help us win with this deck, let's go through the cards that help make it happen. It's time to go on to the mana base. The mana base for this deck is very simple, we're just going to run 36 planes. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average EDH rec god eternal catcher deck is going to set you back $261.35, let's see what we compare to that. Our deck is going to be much more affordable coming in at just $24.96. And just a quick reminder that our deck cost actually doesn't include our commander because it is a commander excluded episode. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are built to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades that you can add into the deck, and what I would take out for those cards too. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into this, these reasonable upgrades are going to be completely based off of my own perspective. When you're making choices on how to adjust your deck, you're taking your own playstyle and meta into account. So make sure that you factor that in when it comes to making your own decisions on what to swap in and what to swap out. Now that we're on the same page, let's go through how I personally would upgrade the deck. First up, we're going to be adding in Pearl Medallion and taking out Marble Diamond. It makes it so that white spells we cast cost one less to cast. Like Oketra's Monument, reducing the cost of our white creatures is huge for this deck. Marble Diamond is an effective mana rock, but it's nowhere near as impactful. And then we're going to add in Concerted Effort and take out Victory's Herald. It's essentially an enchantment version of Audric, which can be very effective. Victory's Herald can be good, but it costs a lot of mana, and we actually have to attack with it for it to be effective. Next up, let's add in Cathar's Crusade and take out Angelic Chorus. It says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus plus one counter on each creature you control. With this deck especially, this gets way out of hand. Angelic Chorus can be good, but we've got plenty of other ways to gain life with this deck. And then we're going to be adding in Mind's Eye and taking out Subjugator Angel. As I've mentioned multiple times, white really struggles at card draw, so Mind's Eye can be a great way for us to get some card advantage. Subjugator Angel can be effective, but at 6 mana, it is pretty costly. Next up, we're going to be upgrading this deck with Endless Atlas and taking out Infiltration Lens. It's a fantastic source of card draw for a monocolored deck, and a card like Infiltration Lens can just be too hit or miss. Finally, let's add in Swiftfoot Boots and take out Martyr Rasalka. It's a fantastic way to cheaply and efficiently protect our commander. Martyr Rasalka isn't a bad card, but it's definitely a card that we can cut. And with that, this show is coming to a close, but I really just want to hear about what you guys think about this episode, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying a deck or just individual cards, make sure to use our link in the description. Not only will you be getting great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. And make sure that you follow us on social media so you can get some early hints on who the next commander just might be. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck tacks. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tack dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, check out some of our other episodes on budget deck tacks, quests for quarters episodes, Commander topics, and Creator's Quarters. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.